and today I'm going to read you the story about Martha and Mary and their home. Martha and Mary were sisters. They lived in Bethany, a small village not far from Jerusalem. Martha and Mary were very good friends of Jesus, so you can imagine how pleased they were when he came one day to visit them at their home. Hello Jesus, said Mary, running out to meet him. It's so good to see you. Martha stood in the doorway watching. She thought, I must tidy the house and get some food ready. While Martha worked hard in the house, Mary sat with Jesus in the little garden. Jesus had a lot to talk about. He wanted to tell all he knew about God, his Father in heaven. He wanted them to know how much God loves all his people. Mary sat quietly and listened and listened. She loved to hear Jesus speak like this and she ch and she tried to remember everything he said. Martha came out of the house, all hot and bothered. Jesus, she said, I have been working so hard. Please tell Mary to come and help me. But Jesus replied, Martha, I know you have been working very hard. But what I had to say was so important that Mary was right to stop and listen. Let's just have a simple meal and enjoy our time together. So Mary and Martha spent a restful, happy day with Jesus, their very special friend. Sometime later, Martha and Mary's brother, Lazarus, fell ill. Martha and Mary were very worried about him and they sent a messenger to find Jesus. Please see if you can find Jesus and tell him Lazarus is very ill. Hurry, please, they told the messenger. The messenger found Jesus with some of his other friends and gave him the message. Jesus' friends expected him to set off straight away, but he didn't. The friends were puzzled, but Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. He waited for two days before setting off. Let's go now to see Lazarus, he said, much to the relief of his friends. But they hadn't even reached Bethany when word came that Lazarus had died. When they reached the house, it was already full of friends who had come to comfort Martha and Mary. We are so very sad that Lazarus has died, they said. Mary stayed at home crying because she was so sad. But Martha went out to meet Jesus. Oh Jesus, if only you had been here, our brother would not have died. But I know that you can help him now. Jesus understood how sad she felt. He said, do you believe that I am the son of God? Trying not to cry, Martha said, yes, Jesus, I do. Then Martha fetched Mary and together they met Jesus and their friends. Where have you buried Lazarus? asked Jesus. Come with us and we will show you, they said. So Martha, Mary and their friends went with Jesus to the tomb where Lazarus had been buried. They were all very upset. One of the people said, Jesus gave sight to the blind man, didn't he? So perhaps he could have stopped Lazarus dying. Then they reached the tomb, which was carved out of a rock in the hillside. Jesus said, take the stone away. And two of the strongest men heaved the stone away from the front of the tomb. Then everyone was quiet as Jesus prayed to God, his Father in heaven. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayers. Please help me to show these people that it was you who sent me to earth to tell them about your love. When he had finished praying, Jesus said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus did. Everyone gasped. They could hardly believe what they saw. How wonderful, they said. Thanks to Jesus, the Son of God, Lazarus is alive again. Jesus had shown them what God's love can do. He had also promised that those who love God and believe in Jesus are given new life forever. Sometime later, Jesus went again to Bethany to visit Martha, Mary and Lazarus. Mary and Martha had prepared a lovely meal for them all 
and they had invited some other guests too. They all sat around the table, listening to Jesus and enjoying the good food. Jesus was enjoying himself enormously. He always liked being with his friends and they always thought he was very good company. This time he was especially pleased to see his friend Lazarus, looking happy and well. During the meal, the sisters were kept very busy. They were filling up the plates and bustling about, making sure that everyone had plenty to eat and drink. When the meal was over, the guests felt happy and contented. That was a lovely meal, they said. They were all surprised to see what Mary did next. For a long time, Mary had been wanting to show Jesus how much she loved him. She had spent all her savings on some very expensive perfume. To show how much she loved her special friend, she poured the perfume on Jesus' feet. Then Mary wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. The perfume filled the air with a lovely fragrance. But one of the guests said crossly, What a waste of money! You should have spent it on something more important, like buying food for poor people. But Jesus said, Don't blame Mary. It is important to look after the poor people. But Mary knows that I will soon go to my Father in heaven. By giving me this special gift, she is showing how much she loves me and my Father. This is very important too. So that's the end of the story about Martha and Mary and their home.
to be with you again this week. We've just been listening to the story of Mary and Martha, the two sisters. They were very different. Jesus came to visit and Martha went into action. There she was cooking and cleaning and getting drinks for her guests and maybe she was kneading the bread. She's getting a bit hot and flustered and she looks around and she sees that Mary, her sister, is sat at Jesus' feet. She's just staring and listening. And she gets a bit cross and she goes in and she says, Jesus, don't you care that Mary's left me to do all the work? Are you going to tell her to come and help me? And Jesus said, oh, Martha, you're worried about so many things, but Mary's chosen the best way. She's chosen to spend time with me. That's what I want you to do. I want you to come and spend time with me. And Jesus says that to us today too. I want you to spend time with me. And then we listen to the song, think of a world without any flowers, think of a world without any trees. And when we do think about a world where there's no flowers and trees, no birds, no sky, no sea, no family, no friends, it'd just be empty and boring and awful. And in that song, it makes us grateful for all the things God has created. And we say, thank you, Lord, and praise your holy name. Well, there's a poem that I like, and the first two lines of it are, what is this world? If full of care, we have no time to stop and stare. Well, this week I've been doing a lot of stare prayers now I know usually you're told it's rude to stare, but if you're in a supermarket and you start staring at somebody because maybe they've got different clothes on to what you wear or they look a bit different, it is rude to stare because you make that person feel uncomfortable. But I've been staring at creation and I've been meeting God in creation. So this week, when we've been out on our walks, We've been looking up at the big blue sky. When I've been in my garden, we've been looking at things. So when you see the pine cones, and just see how amazing the shape of them is, the feel of them, the prickly bits on them. I think they're really wonderful. How amazing that God made pine cones. And when we look, here we are, here's a beautiful leaf. It's green and yellow and it's got a serrated edge. And when I look at it and really stare, I think, that's incredible. Each leaf is incredible. This is some jasmine, which is very, very delicate and it smells beautiful. And I've been staring and it every day because every day some more flowers come out and here we have something really wonderful because this was a present that Aileen and Adrian gave us at Christmas and when it came in December it was just a twig just a stick in fact it stayed as a stick during January and February and even at the beginning of March it just looked like a dead twig and in fact one of my sisters came to stay then and I said to her do you think that plant's dead and she said well it looks like it's dead and I left it there and at the beginning of lockdown some buds started to come they were tiny at first, and then each day they have grown. And every day I go out in the garden in the morning to see how much bigger the plant has got. It's a wonderful part of God's creation. So I want to encourage you this week to go out and do some stair prayers. 
to really look at God's creation, look closely at something, pause, look at the lines, the colour, the shape, or smell something. Take time to thank God for it. Maybe you might use the words from the song, we thank you God and praise your holy name. So we've been thinking about Mary and Martha, spending time with God, and thanking God for his wonderful creation. And I'm going to finish with a prayer. And if you'd like to, you can say Amen at the end. Lord, help us to meet you in creation this week. To see you in the leaves on the trees. To feel you in the sunshine. To look up and meet you in the clouds. Help us to stop and stare, to see you more closely every day. Amen. See you next week. <laughs>